When you're washing your face at night before bed, how much do you think about washing your eyelids and eyelashes too? In this episode of OkiTalk, optometrist Gagan Kayla discusses the importance of eyelid hygiene for your eyes and eyelashes, how it impacts contact lens wearers, and what can happen if you don't pay attention to these sensitive areas. Dr. Kayla? I want to talk to you. Not now, later. No, now. Hello, everyone, and welcome to OkiTalk. Today, we're going to be talking with Dr. Gagan Kayla, who is an independent optometrist with Warby Parker out of Walnut Creek, California. Dr. Kayla, how are you? I'm good. Thanks for asking. I'm so excited to be here. Oh, very good. Yeah, it's, it's always good to talk to a doctor today. It's a nice Wednesday morning, so thank you for being with us. Dr. Kayla, let's let's start with uh, just talking about your background a little bit. Uh, obviously, you're an optometrist in California, but uh, what brought you to the field and what's your specific uh, area of interest? So I've actually, I can't even believe I'm saying I have been in practice. I'm going on my 11th year. I don't look like it. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I was in private practice for seven years, um, working in full scope optometry, doing medical care, glaucoma, dry eye, obviously routine eye care as well. Um, but for the last four years, I've been with Warby Parker. I have my own independent sublease. So it allows for just a little bit more flexibility, um, autonomy of my own schedule. So I get to spend a little bit more time with patients on my own schedule. Um, so I'm doing, I don't have a specialty. I'm in primary eye care. So I do see kids four and up. Um, and I'm doing routine eye care, contact lens exams, and then also medical visits, primarily uh, blepharitis, dry eye, and anterior segment issues. So well, I, I'm glad you brought that up because uh, the, the topic of our discussion today is around eyelid hygiene. You brought up blepharitis, uh, which is, I think, something we're going to talk about today. Uh, so eyelid hygiene is something that's obviously uh, very near and dear uh, to Akisoft's heart. Uh, I, I think that it could be said that we at least participated in coining that term to begin with. Uh, so, uh, you know, it, it's something that's really important to us, but, you know, it's something that maybe the general public doesn't know what in the world we're talking about when we say eyelid hygiene. So let's start there. Like when we say eyelid hygiene, what is it that we're talking about? So I feel like eyelid hygiene is basically at the foundational level. It's just keeping your lids, lashes, all the sensitive tissue around your actual eyeball clean, healthy, and comfortable. So, you know, there's so much discussion about like gut biome, you know, keeping our gut healthy, oral hygiene, that I feel like, you know, a lot of times the eyelids are just kind of glazed over. People wash their face, but a lot of times they're avoiding their lids and lashes. They don't want to get soap in their eyes. They don't want to get water in their eyes. So eyelid hygiene is the proper methods that we can use to clean the uh, sensitive tissue, the lids, the lashes, and the eyelid margin, keeping our oil glands right here along our lid margin clean and healthy. So let's uh, let's talk about that a little bit. I think you touched on something that uh, you know uh, all of us intuitively realize, but th but don't talk about a lot, right? When we wash our face, how do we wash our face, right? We're like this, right? Everywhere except for here, right? Uh, and 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 for the obvious reason that we don't want to get soap in our eyes because it is uncomfortable, right? So it, it, if I'm not keeping up eyelid hygiene in my normal bathing, if you will, right? How do I cleanse my eyelids. I, I, do you suggest that I put soap in my eye? How do I cleanse them? So, you know, that's an interesting question because over the last 10 years, I feel like just the eye care space in general, like the products we have in our toolbox to recommend and prescribe for our patients has exploded and in a good way. So before, you know, a long time ago, even in some practice today, today, you know, patients will get the recommendation of, hey, use baby shampoo or a clean washcloth and just wash your lids and lashes. But you know, studies have shown that there are toxins and chemicals, even in baby shampoo, that can actually make the biochemistry of your eyelids worse and more dry. So in the last few years, like I said, there's just been so many more um, products available that are healthier and safer to use around our lids and lashes. So there's products that are uh, medicated lid wipes, some that are a little bit more surfactant or soapy based, and some that are a little bit more um, kind of on the go disposable lid wipes. There are foaming cleansers that are formulated to keep the, the bacteria and the oils kind of at a normal healthy level around the lids and lashes. There are sprays. 
Um, now there's even tools. So kind of like how we have our um, electronic toothbrushes, we have, you know, tools that are actually created to get really into the crevices of the eyelid margin to get rid of all these bacteria and microbes and parasitic kind of infestations around the lids and lashes to get them really clean and healthy. So Dr. Kayla, I'm, I'm listening to you here, but what you're talking about, this is for ladies, right? Like, uh, like oh, people who wear eye makeup, like not everybody needs to cleanse their eyelids, do they? Yes, we do. Um, so just like I tell, you know, my I have a three year old and a seven year old. And sometimes they'll say, Mom, I want to do this by myself. I can clean my face by myself. You know, everyone, it doesn't matter their age, their gender, you know, the, the basically we have a biochemistry around our lids and lashes that needs to be kept clean and um, basically at a healthy level where we don't have the uncomfortable symptoms of irritation, redness, goopy discharge in the mornings. So it doesn't matter if you wear eye makeup or don't. Um, really, you know, a lot of patients who don't wear eye makeup, they have a very active lifestyle. They're outdoors, they're hiking, they play sports. They're getting a lot of dander buildups, uh, oil, bacteria, sweat around their lids and lashes that needs to be cleaned off properly and on a daily basis. So whether it's one or two times a day. Okay, so I get that. We're, we're, we're cleansing our eyelids, but what if I don't, Dr. Kayla? What, what if I don't cleanse my eyelids? What could possibly happen? Well, you're just nasty. <laughs> 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 well, you're just being bad. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. But yeah, so that's where we start getting the symptomatic kind of expression of the disease. So I kind of mentioned blepharitis and dry eye. Blepharitis is where we start getting inflammation along our eyelid margin. So there's bacteria, there's staph, seborrheic, and even these little mites called demodex that can start building up on our eyelids, creating almost a sticky biofilm. And, you know, just like any other living organism, those bacterial microbes, they're feeding off of the oils and the scaly dandruff that's sitting on our lids and lashes, but they're also excreting some byproducts. Those are toxins. I don't like to say it, but it's basically bacterial poop. Um, they're releasing all that stuff that's getting into your actual tear film. So if you're a contact lens wearer, if you're on a computer screen all day, if you're a child that plays sports, all that stuff is getting into the actual ocular surface, making your vision blurred, making your eyes uncomfortable. Um, it can actually lead to, like I said, the expression of disease and issues that need to be treated medically. So uh, let, let's talk about that for a second. If, if I am a contact lens wearer, um, are there any special precautions I need to take um, when I'm cleansing the eyelid uh, or, or should I pay special attention to it because I'm a contact lens wearer? And so for contact lens wearers and non-contact lens wearers, everyone needs the basic foundation of good lid hygiene. But when we talk about contact lens wearers, there's the new wearer and then there's the current wearer. And so I think when we talk about contact lens patients, it's really important to kind of evolve their lid hygiene kind of protocol or the products we recommend as that patient ages. So in my practice, I do new fits on patients that are young as 12 years old, you know, patients in their 20s that are maybe even yesterday, I had a patient who wanted to wear contact lenses at her best friend's wedding. I have a 55 year old presbyo that doesn't want to wear progressives, right? So we see patients in all different age categories. And even, you know, when we start with that 12 year old, we give them such good education or even the 20 year old, we give them such good education. You need to clean your lids and lashes. You want to wash your face, put your contacts in and then do, you know, like you said, eye makeup or anything that's going on to the, um, to the lids or lashes. But, you know, we kind of forget five years later, they come back and they're kind of like pros. So we forget that patient education part that those patients need to be kind of re-educated at different parts of their contact lens wear journey. The 12 year old versus, you know, after five years, they've gone through puberty, they've had hormonal changes, they might have acne, rosacea, which can also affect basically their lid anatomy and how their oil glands are functioning. So we have to be really cognizant of re-educating that patient every year as their body changes, as their kind of like health profile changes to kind of give them the, you know, the proper products to clean as their lifestyle kind of evolves as well. 
So uh, in terms of your own practice, uh, when you're talking about eyelid hygiene, uh, what are your recommendations, right? Like what protocol should I follow if I'm trying to maintain healthy eyelids? Yeah, so I like that question because it's not a one size fits all. Like, you know, you are not the same as my 16 year old soccer player. You are not the same as my, you know, patient that's in drama or does cosplay, very heavy eye makeup. So what I try to do in terms of my protocol, I spend about 30 minutes with each one of my patients. It's a one woman show. Like they're seeing me from the beginning of their exam all the way to their end. I don't have a technician. So I really get to know my patient's lifestyle. Uh, what they're doing throughout the day, and then what kind of symptoms they're having. Are their eyes uncomfortable starting in the morning or versus just in the evening? So it really helps me to tailor kind of a treatment protocol for them that's very individualized for their needs. Um, for example, a patient that's kind of on the go, um, they travel, maybe they play sports. I will recommend a medicated lid wipe that's disposable. So some of these wipes, there are a lot of different companies have medicated lid wipes that you can use for cleansing the lids. Some of them need water after and some of them don't. Um, so I will sometimes use a wipe that they can kind of incorporate into their daily habit. Um, sometimes I will use a foaming cleanser if it's somebody that uses a lot of heavy makeup. And then I might add a second step with a hypochlorous spray to really, um, which is effective. It's non-toxic, it's non-irritating, and it really gets rid of all the little microbes around the lids and lashes. So I, I tailor my protocol to depending on the patient's age and their lifestyle, but it has to be easy and it has to be effective. Otherwise, they're not going to do it. So if you give them a 12 step program, they're most likely not going to do any of those 12 steps versus just like, you know, one or two things they can kind of stack into their daily habits. You know, I think you touched on something too, that there, there's kind of two things that you're looking for here. One, one is cleansing, and then in some cases is also disinfecting, if you will, right? Uh, it, it, yeah. Not always the same thing. Um, uh, cleansing we always need, sometimes we need disinfectant. Uh, but uh, you know, the, as you said, there's lots of tools out there to, to get there. And yeah. uh, you know, we're in a good place when it comes to that. Now, when, if I'm a contact lens wearer, does that uh, protocols change significantly for me? You know, it, it changes a little bit just because with contact lenses, you know, patients are just naturally going to touch their eyes more, right? They're going to touch their eyes when they're inserting the lenses. Obviously, we try to educate them. You got to wash, wash, wash. And, and you know, depending on um, the type of contact lens they're in, there's daily disposables. If we're talking about the soft lenses, there's dailies, bi-weeklies, monthlies. So depending on the type of lens they're using, um, that can really affect their eyelid hygiene baseline foundation can really affect their contact lens comfort. So with the contact lens wearers, I will always tell them twice a day, you're washing your eyes in the morning, you're washing your eyes in the evening. Um, don't shower with your lenses in, you're not going to swim with your contacts and you're not going to sleep in your contacts. So that also avoids, um, you know, those microbes kind of getting onto the ocular surface and onto the contact lens. So for those, for those patients, it's really important to do a kind of twice a day lid hygiene protocol. Very good. You know, we've covered a lot today, uh, Dr. Kayla, uh, you know, talking about eyelid hygiene. And as I said at the top, uh, you know, it's, it's maybe a, a term that not everybody has heard, um, you know, and, and, and sometimes, and I think you could probably vouch for this, it's something that nobody's heard of until they have an issue, right? And then uh, once they have an issue, now it becomes a, a part of their life. And, and I think uh, what a lot of doctors are trying to uh, teach the public nowadays is that, uh, you know, there, there's steps that you can take and there's conversations that you can have with your doctor to prevent this from becoming an issue in the first place if, if, if you take these simple steps. Would you agree with that statement? 100%. Prevention is key. So that's why, like I said, my 30 minutes face-to-face -face time with the patient, I try to kind of elicit all the information. Sometimes patients don't realize these symptoms of discomfort, the kind of, you know, morning boogers or crusties in the morning. They just think it's it's normal, right? And so it, it's really important to ask the right questions. Um, when I do, you know, have a patient that says, no, everything's fine, I'm good, and I see something under the microscope, I think the most effective tool is a photo, right? So I learned this when I first started practicing in a private office. Um, you snap a picture, you show it to the patient. This is literally what I'm seeing under the microscope. And again, you just educate them. Hey, we don't want this becoming a problem. You don't want to sty. You don't want irritation. 
you know, our vision and our ocular health, we kind of take for granted until, like you said, there's an issue or a problem. Um, so it's really important to kind of get ahead of it. And a lot of times when patients see that photo and they're like, ew, that's on my eye, they're a lot more likely to, you know, stick to the regimen you're recommending. It's sometimes, you know, I find it more effective to just dispense products directly from my clinic, um, whether it's a foaming cleanser or a lid wipe, something that's easy that, again, they can just incorporate into their daily routine. Then they actually walk out with a solution rather than just this kind of general recommendation, like, hey, go wash your eyes. Um, so I think education, patient education is, is such an important, um, important thing. And that's why I've, <laughs> I'm dabbling a little bit on Instagram. So on social media, I'm trying to make some of these eye care topics just relatable using some humor and some, some things that we just hear every single day. I'm just taking it to Instagram and it, it's just so fun kind of interacting with people all over messaging me and commenting saying like, oh my gosh, I get this. Like, I didn't know you know, that's what my eyes look like under a microscope or, or whatever the case is. So it's really fun, um, really getting out there and educating the patients about eyelid hygiene. So absolutely. Well, and Dr. Kayla, like one of the things we always say around here is you absolutely need to clean your eyelids. All right. And, and I think you you touched on it because if you don't, that's nasty. <laughs> that's nasty. Yeah, we don't want to be nasty. nasty. <laughs> well, very good. Yeah, I think this is just such a fun full circle moment because AkiSoft was um, so 2013 is when I graduated and I and I started working in a private practice that was in especially in dry eye, and AkiSoft was the first product we were doing um, dispensing in office, and so I think this is just a really fun you know full circle moment for me. Absolutely. Well, we've enjoyed having you on the show today. And uh, this is such an interesting uh, topic. And certainly anybody uh, in the comments, if you have any further questions about eyelid hygiene, uh, it, certainly we can uh, answer. I don't know if uh, Dr. Kayla will be available, but she might be available. Sounds like Dr. Kayla is on Instagram. So certainly look her up on there. Yeah, it's Gug and Kayla OD. So find me on Instagram, uh, shoot me a DM, give me some topics you want videos on. So I'm always happy to happy to do this on my days off. <laughs> Well, very good. Well, we've certainly enjoyed having you on here and uh, we'll look forward to talking again in the future. So Dr. Kayla, thank you so much.